Hi, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Trish from Trish's Creative Treasures. Yep, I'm Trish, hello. Um, I am actually going to do a video today and give you the 10 non-yarny things about me. I actually did one of these the other night and I did it way too long that I did not have sufficient enough amount of memory on my phone for me to be able to put it on YouTube. So I'm going to try to make it a little bit on the shorter side, but who knows? I like to talk. I'm a blabber. I can't help it. Okay. Number one, I am one of them disgusting people that is infatuated, obsessed, and addicted to watching zit videos. Yes. Like the pimple popping, cyst busting, the nastier, the better. And not only do I have to watch it, I, oh my God, I see someone with pimples and I'm like, let me get after you. Not only just pimples, blackheads. My husband, I attack him about once a month. He's good though. He just sits and lets me do it, even though he's like, mm, mm, mm. and, um, Tiana, I, she likes to come into the shop and get her eyebrows waxed. So I'll do one eyebrow and I'll make her lay there because one eyebrow's done and the other one isn't. And that way I can get after her because her nose gets pretty whopping full of blackheads. And I'm like, girl, you need to take them out. They're not going to go anywhere unless you get rid of them. So that's my way of getting after my daughter. And then when my son-in-law's brother comes, him and I always have an appointment, me and his back. He knows it too because he, he gets some good ones. Oh my. Yeah, he's like a zip popper's dream. Yeah. Okay, enough about my disgustingness. <laughs> um, number two, I absolutely love... Love, 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 love coffee. I drink coffee all the time. And by any chance, if I'm not drinking coffee, I do drink a lot of um, iced tea. I love iced tea. And I used to be a Pepsi addict, but not so much anymore. Every once in a while, I have Pepsi, but it's normally coffee or iced tea or some good old-fashioned ice water. I do drink a lot of ice water, too, because... Uh, one of the medications I take makes my mouth extremely dry and, and nothing helps with that. So, number three, I love to sing. Um, when I was younger, I grew up as a preacher's kid and I was in church choir. Uh, all the different things that we do outside of church for singing. Um, I was in school musicals, I was in the chorus, I did district chorus, I did county chorus. Um, not only was I a singer, but a pianist as well, and I used to play the French horn. Now if you'd give me a French horn, I would have no idea what to do with it. And since I don't play the piano all that often, um, when I sit down to play, I feel like I'm like, oh my god. Like, I, I forget certain things, like I can do it, but I just feel like it's very beginner stage. If I would sit down and practice at it, I would get to where I used to be. I used to get paid to do weddings and all that year on before kids. Since I've had kids, it's just been a no, not happening. Um, but once I did do a karaoke contest and I sang the song Alone by Heart. And I won the karaoke contest from singing that song and I won 500 bucks. Hey, it was easy money. I would do it all the time if I could go out all the time and do it. Mm -hmm. All right, number four, I hate driving. I had an almost fatal car accident when I was 17, and ever since then, I have had a massive fear of being behind the wheel. Um, when I drive here local in the town where I live, and just to like the couple little bits of outskirts, or I drive down to Reading, which is half an hour where all the good stores are, um, that I'm okay with. I don't know if it's like, it's like my comfort zone, but anywhere else I have such a panic attack that I can honestly say, I'd rather you shoot me and I take a bullet before you make me drive anywhere that I'm not comfortable driving. Plus my panic attacks, it just isn't safe here for anybody, me or anybody else on the road. So technically either my husband has to drive or I go somewhere with my mom or dad, you know, someone else has to drive or guess what? We're just not going to go. All right. Number five, I hate snakes. I'm petrified of snakes. My 
first husband always used to have snakes. And you know what? Little, they got out when I was home alone. Like, and I'd have to go knock on my next door neighbor's do door. And their six-year-old child would come out and get the snakes and put them away from me. And we're like, how pathetic is that? Like, <laughs> I, I was like, mm. Are you touching them? I, mean, I remember I was dusting the one time and I put my dusting rag on top of one of their cages and somehow or another within a couple of minutes it took me after dusting my knickknacks and putting them back up on the shelf where they were to reach behind me and grab my, my rag that snake got out of its cage and coiled up in my rag. I mean I was just so like just, I like dropped the thing and then knock 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 here comes the little six year old and put it back in the cage yeah I mean, after that, I was like, no, no snakes. His snakes always, like, we had a huge bathroom in our apartment we were living in then. I mean, the bathroom was the biggest room in the whole entire place. And he had cage upon cage upon cage of snakes in there. And I would walk in the bathroom, and immediately they would, they would strike at me. And I'm like, I don't even bother with you things. Like, why? Why are you striking at me? But, I mean, there's things that happen, like his one snake, like the neighbor's kid put his hands in to go pick up one of the smaller snakes because him, my ex-husband and his uncle built this huge wooden cage with terrarium and everything in it. It was supposed to be the impossible cage that they couldn't get out of. Well, let me tell you, they got out of that thing. But anyways, yeah, my neighbor's kid went to put his hand in the cage to pick up one of the snakes to hold and he, he had a big python like um it wasn't a ball i think it was a burmese um and this thing like literally bit this kid like right here in the hand and he was latched on and you just saw the blood running down the kid screaming he's freaking out and the snake was huge it was a really big snake so i mean it took my ex-husband quite a bit to pry this thing's jaw open to be able to get the kid's hand out of it because I don't know why I guess he thought the kid's hand was food but he bit him and that's the one that got out of its cage one morning I had uh woken up to go to work he was already at work and um when you went in my bathroom you had to walk up two steps and then there was a corner which the light switch was there and then I kept my vacuum cleaner in that corner. Well, I went to turn on the light switch and I had this at me. And needless to say, the freaking big snake, the big snake is coiled up on my vacuum cleaner. So I go and knock on my neighbor's door. And now the mom came because the, after the snake bit her son, she didn't want her daughter touching it. So mom came, got the snake off my, my vacuum cleaner, put it back into the impossible way, the pot the impossible cage of escaping and uh really realized that the other four little snakes were missing so i left i went to work in my pajamas that day i wasn't staying in my apartment called my husband at the time and oh did i chew him out i was like that's it that's it you get rid of these damn snakes or i'm gonna chop every single one of their freaking heads off like i was not having it snakes no more i was done so he came home from work as I sat outside, because when I got home from work, I would not go in our apartment until them damn snakes were found. They say they couldn't find it. They turned up all the furniture, everything. So I had a cute, cuddly ferret that um, he let loose. And the ferret found them snakes coiled up in my bedroom closet. And after that, I had the heebie-jeebies of those stupid things were just slithering around on me in my sleep. I was just like, uh-uh, mm, mm. hate them. Okay. So... That is number five. <laughs> I hate snakes. Um, number six is I've been married three times. My husband now is um, my third. My first husband is the father of my three daughters. Um, I was married a second time, which didn't last very long. Um, he had cystic fibrosis. Uh, we didn't, he was alive yet when our, we split up. Like, we lived together for, what, two, three years. And then we got married. And all was good until mommy died. And then when his mom died, he went freaking psycho. I don't know. Drove me nuts. Drove my kids nuts. Like, he was nice to his dogs. But he could not be the least bit kind to my daughters. Which he made a vow that he was going to be a decent stepfather and always be them for there be there for them 
And I just had a Dustin Cure then, you know. Tiana wasn't born yet. There was no Drake in. So I ended up leaving him and I dated a guy that was, I left our marriage, our wedding anniversary was May 26th. So I left him one week before our one year anniversary. And then I had been dating a guy throughout the summer and the end of summer, my first husband started writing to me while he was in prison. Like he was an abusive man. He beat me. And he verbally and emotionally abused me. I mean, in any way possible, I was a mess. I was a wreck from that man. It took me a long time of uh, counseling and everything to be able to feel decent about myself again. Because he just messed with my head. But, you know, stupid me. After he started writing me letters and stuff, believed he changed. Because he was doing counseling and he was doing this and that. You know, he got off the drugs. He was clean. So, yeah, I did the stupid mistake of going back to him. Uh, wasn't no time before he started being the abuser again. I found out I was pregnant with our third daughter, Tiana. And when I was five months pregnant with her, I found out he was cheating on me again. Because the first time around, he cheated on me. So, I was it. I was just like, get, get out. Get out. And, uh, I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Yeah, he got out and that was it. And then I dated somebody for a while. And then in 2009, I met my husband that I'm with now. So, and he's the son of my father, Draken. So, yeah, it is what it is. I'm not ever going to get married again. If anything were to happen to be, you know, my husband or between us or whatnot, I would never, ever get married again. There's no way in God's green earth. Mm -mm. This is enough. All right, number seven. One of my favorite pastimes is sitting by a fire. I have so much fun with our neighbors, our friend. Well, our neighbors are all my husband's family. <laughs> you know, we just we just sit around fires at night. And it's like lately, last summer and this summer, there's more rain than there is anything. So everything's wet. You can't keep nothing dry. Even if you keep a tarp over it, there's just so much moisture in the air that it just keeps the wood wet. So, hmm. but yeah, when we get the chance, every chance that we get, we do have fires and sit out back and just, we'll sit up to all hours just being stupid and laughing and having a good time. It's just. I don't know. It's just one of those things I grew to love. I love being in nature. I love being outdoors. And that's one thing I chose about the house we moved into. It's a huge building and there's six houses. So pretty much everybody that lives in these houses is my husband's family. And it's the yard that brought me in. Like, I love my yard. I have a huge yard. We're in the woods. Uh, and just yesterday we had the beauty of this huge, I mean huge doe. And her baby come through the yard. It's like, and then we got the fox, and you know all the other little critters. You know we got the possums, the skunks, the raccoons, all that. It's I don't know. It's just it's awesome. I love it. So our house is old. It's falling apart. The landlord doesn't fix nothing. But we spend more time outside when it's nice out than what we do inside. So all right, number eight. I love horror movies. That's my favorite genre. I, I, you know, the Chucky and Freddy and Jason and Michael Myers and all that. Nah, I watched them. I mean, back when I watched them, they're good. But I like a horror, I should, guess you could say more thriller. The ones that make you sit at the edge of your seat and you just, you keep waiting for the next part and the next part, you know. And at the end of the movie, it's like, I knew it. I knew he was the killer, you know. Those are my favorite kind of movies where they keep you going. They, they, they your, your emotions get part of it. Okay. Number nine. My kids laugh that at the Halloween time, this time of year, I go shopping for household decor, Halloween decorations, or what I decorate my house in. Um, I am Wiccan. So a lot of the decorations go right with my 
way of being, my spirituality. So I love it. I love decorating my house and Halloween stuff. And most people, like, especially when my kids have friends over for the first time, they're like, don't you take your Halloween decorations down? And Jonah's like, no, they're just mom's regular, normal, everyday decorations. Mm -hmm. Even at Christmas, I don't take them down. They're part of my walls. Um, and number 10 is, I love my fur babies. I have my dog. She's seven. She is, well, her name is Acadia. She is a mix of Pitbull, Lab, and Husky. Um, she's just the sweetest thing. She would never, ever harm a fly. I think if you were to come harm one of us, she would. She would get nasty because I've already had somebody, like, I, I babysat her friend's kid, you know, till like 2, 3 in the morning, and I brought the baby upstairs with me, and, you know, I told him just, when you come in, just, you know, where every, you know where our room is, just come in and come get her, because we'll probably be sleeping, and I told him to text me first, just in case, so Katie didn't, you know, wake up the baby or anything, and he came and opened up the door, and, I mean, I grabbed her collar real fast, because she went to lunge at him, because she's like, who are you walking into my mama's room, so... She's just, but she is, she's really a sweetheart. All she wants is like, when you come to my house for the first time, she's going to jump all over you. If you just let her lick you, she's happy. She'll walk away or she'll let you pet her. You're the best of friends, but she, she's more bark than she is anything. Um, and I also have three guinea pigs. I have three females. Their names are Luna. Luna. What am I talking about? Luna. Luna was our cat that we had that passed away. We have Lily. We have Nibbles and Mugwort. So that's our three guinea pigs. Um, Nibbles and Lily are short hair American. And Lily is, I mean, and Mugwort's my silky. She's got the, the long, really long hair. She's, got, she's the kind that has to be bathed and groomed and brushed and all that. She don't like to be held. She don't like to be bothered. I call her my paranoid, schizophrenic, anti-social anti -social guinea pig. Yeah, so... I do what I have to do with her, but then I'll put her back in the cage because it's like her heart's beating so fast when you're holding her. Like, I don't know if something happened to her or what, but, you know, before I had her, but ever since I've had her, she's like, she is paranoid of being held. And when you do, even though you're being kind to her and you're calming her down and you're petting her and stuff, her little heart's just beating so fast. I'm afraid she's going to stroke out or something. So I don't force her to be held. Let me see. I think that's it. It says like a bonus one, as you can all see. I love piercings. I had my, like, two here, one here, and one here. They were called angel bites. I had those done, but I had to get dental work done last year. And in the amount of time that I took them out right before everything had to be done. And by the time I got home and I went to put them back in, the holes had closed up already. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. It cost me 70 bucks to get that done. But yeah, I just have like <laughs> my tongue, my labrum, my nose done anymore. Everything else I've taken out over the years. Um, but, and I love working with funky colors. Like this is part of my job. This is what I do. This is my specialty. Yeah, I specialize in doing these colors at work. I do all sorts of different techniques and it is so much fun. It, it's, it's like playing, you know, and I'm getting paid to do it. I love it. Um, and I'm also, I love my tattoos. This one's a cover up that I'm doing. It's a fairy. I don't know if you can see it. it's a fairy. And then there's full moon with it. And then she's sitting on a skull and then there's going to be a whole scenery that goes with it. So yeah, that was, covering up two lilies that I had on my arm and then I got let's see it's my witch's hat and my god and my goddess Freya, Freya and Pan and then this one's gonna get covered up because the guy that did this like totally and completely see I can't even get it right on camera he just it doesn't even look nice it's like my awful junky tattoo so I'm end up gonna get a big dragon on the bottom of my arm and we're going to incorporate the dragons and the lilies together but that's going to take some time till i can afford that it's not cheap at all but anyways 
I did. I made this in 10 minutes less than what I did the last one. So, yes, that is my 10 non-yarny things. If there's ever anything else you want to know, just ask questions. Ask away, and I'll answer. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I want to thank all my subscribers that are already with me. If this is your first time viewing my channel, hey, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified every time I put out a video. Um, my channel is about crochet and yarn and when I get a little bit better at it, sewing. So that's one thing I've got to really work on with myself. I know how to use the sewing machine and do basic stuff, but I want to learn how to do more advanced stuff. Eventually one day I would like to be able to make clothes. I've always wanted to be able to, because I'm a big girl and it's hard to find clothes. And my goal has always been to be able to make clothing that's beautiful and stylish and affordable for women of all sizes. But to be able to especially have bigger women being able to feel stylish because a lot of times it's old lady looking stuff. It's like, I don't want to wear that. Mm -mm, nope. So anyways, yes, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to get off of here. So it was nice to talk to all of you. And I hope you have a great night. Bye.